Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Digital Signage Debrief. My name is Thomas Fraser Bacon. Today we'll be taking a look at why the direct view LED market is booming, as well as exploring why this emerging technology is worth taking a look at for our reseller partners. For this instalment, I'm joined by our DV LED Solutions Specialist, David Jones. Good morning, David. Morning, Tom. Um, for our partners who have not been formally introduced uh, to yourself, David, could you give us a, a bit of an introduction uh, and a background uh, within the industry for yourself? Yeah, sure. First of all, thanks for inviting me along. No I've seen problem. some of the other shows that you've done and I've really enjoyed them. Thank you. Um, I've been in the industry for well over 10 years now, playing with LED systems. Um, started working with some of the major manufacturers when uh, Direct View LED was really you know, just starting to get into the market, mainly in the outdoor market with um, stadiums. I worked on some fairly major projects with LED at the Emirates Stadium for with Arsenal Football Club. I did some work at Trent Bridge for the cricket scoreboards. I did some indoor installations with some of the big shopping centres as uh, LED started to become more and more popular. Excellent. So, um, obviously, as you're aware, David, most of our partners are much more familiar with LCD digital signage than, than direct view LED. So I suppose the first thing we should cover are, are the differences uh, between the two uh, technologies. So what would you say the advantages are of using DV LED over LCD? Well, there's a number of really major advantages. The first one being brightness, especially with outdoor. There's the, the brightness levels you can get with direct view LED are way in excess of what you can achieve with LCD. Mm. So it's possible to put big digital signage applications up with very high bright that can be seen in full sun, sunlight um, and make very big screens without the, without the mullions that you get with LCD. Even with high bright LCDs, it's very difficult to get a really big message across yeah, because yeah. of the, the gaps between the screens. So DV gives you that distinct advantage of being able to produce very bright, very vibrant signage without the millions on board. I think I agree, um, especially with outdoor. I think for a long time now, outdoor, it's kind of dominated outdoor. But I think what we're seeing more and more is even for window displays. Yes, of course. The, the, one of the drives of the technology is that the pixel pitch is getting smaller yeah. and therefore the resolution of the displays is, is going up. That means that you can get more message across per square inch of display, if you yeah, like, absolutely. Um, with LED solutions. So it means that it's gradually working into the marketplace that would have been dominated historically by LCD. What would you say some of the other advantages are? Well, there's, um, it, it's modular. I mean, that's a great thing, and you can see on some of the screens behind us here, the, the panels can be everything from a very small half a metre squared to whatever size you want, yeah, there yeah. is no limit on the size of the display you can have. So it means that there is no limits. You know, the only limit is your imagination Absolutely. and what you want to see on the screen, of course. Definitely. I think uh, in terms of size, but also, like you say, in terms of shape, because it's, because it's a modular design, shape and form and aspect ratio, you can pretty much achieve anything. Absolutely. And you're starting to see displays with corner sections and curves and window displays and all sorts of things that the technology is driving towards to make them a a very viable and um, attractive solution. Absolutely. I think another thing is how, how kind of robust and reliable they are um, in, in comparison, especially with um, LCD video walls. Most of our partners are very much aware of how fragile they are in terms of when installing them and even when using them. Uh, obviously, yeah. LED doesn't really have that There's issue. There's a distinct um, advantage with LED with over LCD, especially in a video wall application, is um, LED should have uh, a life cycle of a... 70 to 100,000 hours, um, which you can't get out of LCD. Yeah. The, the, the technology doesn't lend itself to that. You also get uniformity with LED that you don't get with LCD, especially as products age. Mm. Um, you'll very often see on a, an aged video wall that you get discoloration around the edges. Yeah, mural and, and clouding. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. The, the panels don't look exactly the same. With a good LED product, you don't get those issues. I mean, you mentioned uniformity over time, but even kind of out of the box, I think in terms of like, you know, um, contrast ratio and, and colour accuracy, it's going to be generally better with, with LED compared to LCD. There's, there's a lot more functions you can play with to adjust LED to make it look better and better. Like any display product, if you spend enough time setting it up properly, they can all look good. Mm. LED has the ability to keep that really good quality image for much longer than an LCD product have. Absolutely. I think as well, <clears throat> one thing I'm seeing is in the corporate market where 
um, LCD video walls would normally be used in boardrooms and things like that. We've got more kind of interest in, in, in solutions such as this because they're, they're bezel-less as well. Um, I think that, you know, having, having those bezels there for a lot of people, it, it's not a problem. From, for, I think for an increasing number of end users, that's becoming more of a, you know, more of a sticking point. Yeah, it's, it's been something that uh, in the last few years, it's certainly the, the increase in volume in, in direct view LED has definitely been to the indoor market. And that's led by, as you say, by the, the mullion effect and uh, the need to not have that, the, the breakup of the image in a boardroom scenario. Um, and the resolution, of course, as, as the technology has improved, we've driven the resolutions of screens has, has increased enormously. So we can now have a boardroom display mm. with high resolution. There's no reason, I mean, this screen, this lovely screen behind us, it's a 1.5 millimeter full HD indoor screen. And mm. it looks great. There's no reason why that shouldn't be a boardroom solution. Traditionally, that would have been, have to be either projection, which in a bright room that we have here would not be yeah, effective, or yeah, yeah. Um, a multi three by three video wall mm. um, to get anything close. And even that wouldn't have the same impact that you can create on a, a screen like the one behind us. Absolutely. I think <clears throat> to, to, to show the other side of the coin as well, um, some of the disadvantages of using uh, direct view LED, obviously it's more expensive. Um, it, it generally has a lower resolution. We can cover that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but I think the biggest, the biggest issue is um, how how unfamiliar with the technology um, a lot of integrators and resellers are. Um, in um, the 16 by 9 report, uh, DV LED goes mainstream. Um, a, a massive 97.6% of buyers had either a basic or no knowledge uh, when it came to, to DV LED. I think that's, that's kind of where we come in and, and where you come in to kind of assist us um, with, with kind of educating our partners, I suppose. That's quite an alarming figure, actually. I think we need to do more. Definitely. Um, yeah, it, it's one of the problems with, with LED. A lot of people, they hear the term LED and associate it with a, a consumer product from, from the TV store um, because that's how they've been branded. That's why we put direct view on the front of, uh, of the products that we're working with to make sure that it's separated from the flat panel LED technology mm. that floats around. That's obviously a backlit technology. DV being direct view is yeah. uh, something slightly different. Absolutely. Um, I think in conclusion, um, I think obviously the LED uh, market's growing at a rapid rate. Odema expects the average growth uh, of 24% each year from 2022 to 2024. Uh, obviously the sales of our core uh, LCD range is also increasing. Uh, I think the main thing is it's important that all options are considered for each, each project. I think um, whether, whether or not you think LED is appropriate, I think the important thing for our partners to, to kind of keep in mind is whatever, whatever the requirements, obviously get in touch with us at an early stage and, and work with your account manager who are experts in, in, in the field. And obviously they've got you as a resource. We've got other internal resources as well. Um, and we can essentially help them to find the best solution regardless of whatever their customers' requirements and, and budget are. Absolutely. We're here to start from, from the very beginning of the project right the way through to installation. We can guide and help with that, with that process, uh, making sure we've got the specifications right from the get-go, if you like, um, and helping the end user with where the right technology is appropriate, what the pixel pit should be, how big the screen needs to be, what the content needs to be. It's very much, as with all display technology, it's very much about content. So getting the right product to show the content. It's actually, it's the content that's important. Exactly. I mean, we talk a lot about our great technology, but actually the most important thing, first of all, is what do you want to see on the screen and where do you want to exactly. see it from? That guides the rest of the technology. Once we've got that, then we can help you know, get that project from, from the very beginning right through to the end. Absolutely. So uh, it's clear that, obviously, direct view LED sales are increasing. Why, in your opinion, why do you think sales are increasing for DV LED? Well, there's, there's always a cost factor. And as the technology improves and the manufacturing process improves, then the cost comes down. That, that It's becoming a more efficient product to build. Uh, and therefore, the cost comes down and it becomes more accessible to a wider market. The resolution is a huge factor. So the pixel pitch, you know, we're seeing entry level um, pixel pitch drop year on year for mm. indoor and outdoor. Yeah. And we're looking at pixel pitches now that even five years ago we wouldn't have dreamt about. So that means that the direct view LED is entering more and more of the mainstream 
display market uh, and therefore it appears on more people's radars and the advantages that we spoke about earlier become more apparent when more people see it and see how good it can be as a solution and that's why we're seeing more of it and the growth is from the figures you were saying earlier that's uh, that's where those figures come from people Definitely. expect to be using it more I think um, obviously as I mentioned earlier the growth of outdoor um, is going to kind of naturally naturally be there but I think uh, I'm, I'm sure you're seeing it as well Indoor projects, we're seeing a lot more indoor projects, not just for window displays, um, but, but just in general. Um, I think that's, that, that seems to be the, the, most, the, the most rapidly growing part of the market. It's definitely the biggest part that I've seen is the indoor market is one where we are seeing more and more LED screens appearing in receptions and in boardrooms. Uh, historically, we wouldn't have seen that at all. Um, so that's a huge step for, for LED to enter that part of the market. Um, and, it, and I think it's only going to keep increasing. You know, Definitely. The, the resolution now, um, the screen behind us with the 1.5 mil looks fantastic. In a couple of years' time, you know, 1.5 mil may well be entry level yeah. at LED. The technology and what's coming, you know, the pipeline for LED, uh, some of the technology is extraordinary. And we're going to see it. You know, become more and more mainstream. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. moving moving fast for sure. I think one of the other things that's um, that, that's that's driving the, the the growth as well is how the solutions are becoming more uh, accessible and easier to install, easier to understand. Um, Innovate magazine's LED um, dis, uh, display special report um, stated that integrator friendly features are just as important as impressive technology. Like you mentioned, the pixel pitch. Uh, this is what's kind of driven. Our approach on our latest ranges, you know, making, the, making our products as easy as possible to understand and install and integrate and use. Absolutely. Historically, installing an LED was a major project. Uh, on some of the outdoor ones, they were more of a civil engineering project than it was a display solution. Uh, now we're seeing LED panels that are so much lighter, easier to handle, more robust, better materials, longer life. Um, you can carry a square metre of LED now, no problem at all. Yeah. Historically, you'd need a forklift for yeah. every square metre of LED. That's changed a lot, I think, in it the has, last few yeah. years, quite rapidly. Um, so uh, we've mentioned a couple of times pixel pitch and res resolution. I know that it's one of the things that our account managers, uh, one of the most commonly asked questions, one of the most common issues. So I think we'd be remiss not to at least, at least, at least discuss the topic here. So um, how important is pixel pitch? It's all important for for the end user because pixel pitch will dictate the cost of the screen. Uh, the more pixels you have, the more expensive the screen becomes. So uh, if you get the pixel pitch wrong, if you overspec, so if you go for a resolution that you don't need, you'll be overpaying for your solution. So it's a really critical factor in, in mm. the decision on the screen. There is more often than not no need to have too many pixels because if you have the viewing distance right and the, the content on the screen right, then we can help you dictate which pixel pitch you need and make sure that you're not overpaying for the screen. Definitely. And it's a really important part of I the agree. decision process. I agree. And I think that you, you, you touched on the main thing there is we, we don't, just like with our, with our core ranges, we don't expect all of our partners to be experts in everything. We, you know, that's where we come in. Uh, we, we can help kind of find that balance between cost and resolution and, and, and work closely um, with our partners and the, and the end user to find, to find the most suitable um, system for them. Indeed, yeah, Definitely. I mean, that's what we're here for. Um, I think another thing is, as well as obviously the upfront cost with the finer pixel pitches, obviously also the running cost. Obviously, like, as you mentioned, more pixels, there's more, more, more um, in terms of power consumption is going to be higher. Uh, and also maintenance, obviously, again, more pixels, potentially more pixels to go wrong. Yeah, it's, um, again, this is where technology is sort of leading the way. The LED screens are becoming more and more environmentally friendly, if you like, which is traditionally never something you yeah, associate yeah. with LED. Uh, the, the, uh, the efficiency of the screens is much better now than it used to be. LEDs can be driven harder, can be made brighter, and use less energy. So uh, they're also more efficient in terms of their long levity. Um, you get fewer screens now with pixel failures. You don't get so many screens where power supplies are failing. Um, there's a lot of research and work gone into making sure that the technology not only looks good out of the box, but lasts. I mean, traditionally, you know, a good screen after six, you know, you'd look, put up a screen, it would look great initially, but after a few months, you start to see some of the problems yeah. with the screen. We don't get those issues now with screens. Um, it, you'd have to go, um, 
you know, there's still a, a range of qualities, if you like, but it's always a question of making sure that you get the right screen for your project. That's the important bit. And budget and quality and the technology is all married into one pot, if you like, to make sure we get the right solution. Absolutely. Um, so, finally, David, what do you think the future holds for DV LED? Well, it's accelerated so quickly, Tom, that we're, you know, it, it's like all display technology. We're always amazed at what we look at next week. You go yeah. to a, a show and you, you look at something that you just wouldn't have thought possible a few years ago. LED is no different. The, the, the big drive, obviously, is resolution. And you look at some of the, you know, the mainstream manufacturers, if you, if you like, of uh, the resource and the time they're putting into LED products in general. Um, we know that the market is just going to keep accelerating at the rate it's going. Pixel pitches are obviously going to come down. Um, you know, we're easily sub one millimetre now in, in some areas. It's expensive, but um, the technology is there to do it. And that will keep going down to the point eventually, I think, in my personal opinion, all display technology will be DV LED based or, or a derivative of. Um, we've got different technology in terms of covering, so we've got glue on board technology and chip on board and that's a, a finish on the screen that will make them more robust. Um, it'll enable you to have higher contrast ratios so the blacks will be even blacker than we're seeing now. Um, and also in the SMDs, the small diodes themselves, I think the technology is accelerating to make them even more efficient. So the, the future is very bright, <laughs> to coin a phrase for LED. It's, uh, there's a lot of great things to come and we're going to be able to do more and more and more with the technology. Absolutely. Well, David, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. I think that regardless of whether our partners have got any experience in direct view LED or whether they're completely new to the market, I feel like our discussion today will hopefully have helped them um, in some way. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate you taking the time sure, to talk no to problem. me today. Um, so if you'd like to know any more about our DV LED solutions, have any potential projects, uh, or would like to arrange an in-person demo of any of our ranges, uh, please reach out to us uh, using the contact information in the description. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.